In this tutorial we'll be creating the spiral effect using After Effects. Let's start preparing this clip. So first thing I want to do here is clean up the shot. So I'll go to about here, then I'll go into Window, Content Aware, and I'll create a reference frame. And I like doing this because it basically just renders out the frame and goes straight into Photoshop. Now here I can simply create a mask around my character and I will also include this shadow and click on Generate to Fill and generate and this will quickly do its magic and make a good clean plate here and just like that we've got a really nice clean plate to work with we can choose either of these variations let's just go with this one and hit ctrl s and we're back in after effects with the clean plate i'm going to select the reference frame right click it time and enable time remapping and extend it throughout my comp here and rename this to clean plate now what we want to do is track the shot and I'll be using Mocha for this so I'll simply go to my clip and search for Mocha. Let's go into the interface. Now if you open up Mocha and it looks kind of different to you, all you have to do is go into Workspace and change it from Essentials to Classic or the opposite. Anyways we'll select the pen tool here and I'll just draw a shape around this area because this is what we want to track and track forward. All right, so we got a pretty basic and easy track here. Let's go ahead and control S to save this and exit out. Now I'll create a new null object. We'll call this tracking and I'll go into my mocha layer here, select create data. Now, if you're on an older version, you might see a window pop up and you have to select the mask. So go ahead and select it and hit OK. Then we'll change the export option from corner pin to transform and select my tracking null here, apply. Let's go and create a rough mask around our clean plate here so we only cover what we need to. Now we'll go to the timer mapping point and attach it to our tracking data. So now we've got the clean plate tracking and as you can see we do have an issue here down below and we can try expanding it but maybe I should have chosen a different frame to work with but by now she'll be revealed and the shadow will be visible as well so it doesn't really matter. Let's get into the next step, which is rotoscoping her out. So I'll duplicate my clip. Let's remove the mocha effect here. And rename this to roto. Then I'll choose the roto brush. Double click my layer. And I'll go to the first frame here. And what you want to do here is give it a good first frame to work with. And then it would do its magic. Also, if you didn't know, you can hold down control and then drag your mouse to increase or decrease the brush size. So there's a quick tip for you and this is looking pretty good already. Now what I want to do here is refine the edges around the hair because it is going to get kind of bulky here. So we'll go to the first frame then I'll hold click on my rotor brush, select refine edge and we're simply going to draw a bit of a shape around the hair part and as you can see it creates this kind of a mask here which reveals the hair mostly and isolates it from the background. So if we play this back, you can see it follows along. Now this is looking pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and freeze my clip here and let it run through. All right, so let's start creating the actual portal effect. Now we're mainly going to be using adjustment layers. So let's create our first one here. We'll call this color. And I'm just going to enable my roll layer here so we can see. And I want to draw a shape around maybe a bit taller and I'll select my anchor point tool and drag it to the bottom of my mask so about here in the center and instead of just animating the mask outwards we're going to be animating the scale so I'll first parent my color to the tracking then hit S for the scale and just create two keyframes from 0 to 100 so it sort of scales up from the bottom like so and about here we can have it go back to being 0 and copy this keyframe. Let's select them, hit F9, and I'm gonna create some time mapping like so. And let's add some actual color so we can see this. And the effect we're gonna be working with is called Triton. So let's change this to something orangish, and maybe the highlights to something yellow orange kinda as well. All right. And we've got this growing from the bottom and scaling back down. Now in the original one it was kind of working like a stroke 
and I prefer that instead of just scaling up. So what we can do here is go to the beginning, I will unselect this chain and set my first setting to about 80 and I'll do the same at the ending here. So it basically just scales up a bit and kind of moves up like a stroke. Okay, let's add some texture to this so it's not so flat. I will duplicate my adjustment layer and we'll call this blur. We'll get rid of the triton here. And I do have this concrete texture map, which I'm going to drop a levels effect onto it. And if we start playing with the settings here, you can see we bring some of the details. So we basically just want something like this. So we have some texture to work with. And I'm going to duplicate my tracking. Then let me scale this up a bit. And I will attach this to the new tracking data and pre-compose it. We can rename this to texture. So now we basically got it following along in its own composition with the same tracking data. Let's drop it below here. We'll go back here and add a compound blur. And we can now select the texture here under the layer. And let's start increasing it. See it follows along here and works quite nicely. It's up to you how much you want to play with this. Let's go ahead and create some depth to this shape so it's not just a flat. So I'll create a new solid this time. We'll make it white and call this depth. Then I will parent it to my tracking data as well. And I just want to create a similar mask here so I can go into my mask, copy it, paste it over here in case we need to adjust some things. And we want to drag the anchor point of it to the bottom here as well. And we can then copy the scale properties onto this solid. So it should follow along nicely here. We can make some adjustments by dragging it here. And let's isolate this for a moment and create some of the depth. So we're simply going to do this by right clicking it, go to layer styles and select inner shadow. Now down here, we'll set the distance to about three. And once we start choking the layer, you can see we've got this edge being created inside. We can also increase the size here. So we don't want to go too much, but this kind of creates this inner shape kind of look here and maybe rotate this just a bit here then i'll decrease the choke here so it's blurring out a bit and we can enable it back let's drop it below these two adjustment layers and set it to multiply we can go into the opacity and set it to maybe 40 so it's not as strong okay maybe 50. okay next we want to add some shadows on the floor and we can do this by duplicating our depth solid we'll change it to shadow and instead of using the inner shadow here, we'll just use the regular drop shadow. And we can start aligning this according to our shot. So we'll make it go down here, increase the distance a bit and the size. We can also create a mask here. So it's only around the bottom part. And if I hit M, it'll bring up the mask. We can change this to intersect and it will just proceed to make shadows around this area. Now we want to drag this on top of all of our clips and feather it out. All right, so there are many ways to create this type of shadow. You can see what works best for you and so on. Okay, so our portal is pretty much completed. Let's duplicate one of these adjustment layers and we'll call this glow. And I'm going to be adding a deep glow on top of all of this and feather out my mask by a lot here. And I'll hit M twice and bring up the expansion a bit. And I'll copy the tritone effect just so we have some color and maybe blend with the original, set it to like 60, just so we have sort of a orange tint here around the edges instead of just white. And let's decrease the exposure. We don't want to go too crazy. And of course, enable the chromatic aberration. And speaking of chromatic aberration, we can go back into the color here and add a quick chromatic aberration, which is a free plugin and I do recommend getting it since it creates this quick chromatic aberration, obviously. And if we zoom in here, you can see that it creates this distortion inside, which adds to our effect. And let's now make her coming out of this portal. So I'll drag the roto clip on top. We can just set two opacity keyframes from zero to hundred. Let's trim it down a bit. Now we do want to make sure it follows along with the shadow. So I'll go into my clean plate here and hit M to bring up the mask. I will set a keyframe 
and over time here we're just going to slightly reveal the shadow with her as well so just bring this up okay so not too bad it's a pretty difficult shot to work with with this kind of shadow but i think it's making it work quite well now we don't want her to just fade in and out from the portal. we want to give this some rim light as well and some more to it so since we did create a rotoscope here we can duplicate this layer and i'll disable the opacity i will select this clip go into layer auto trace and we want to select work area alpha and we don't need any blur here and hit on ok and what that's gonna do and hopefully not crash is just create a mask around her so it basically created this mask around her throughout this duration and i can go ahead and get rid of the roto brush because we don't need it and i will rename this to mask now here we'll add a stroke effect and we'll change the paint style from original to reveal original image so if I isolate this and let's increase the brush size to maybe 4 and disable the mask, you can see we just have a mask following the outline of our rotor brush. So now if I add a fast blur here, let's set it to maybe 4 and enable it back, we can set this to additive and we have this cool looking outline being created behind her. So once she walks out of it and we can have it come in a bit sooner here, so I'll drag it here and create two keyframes for my opacity so before she comes in we see the outline being created and then she appears and this can follow along here to create this rim light we can also keyframe the blur here towards the end maybe set this to six so a final touch here i just want to add some turbulent displays here when she comes out so i'll just add a final adjustment layer we'll call this displace we'll go to the beginning of this comp and I'll select M on my mask layer. Let's copy these masks and paste them over here. So basically now if we enable the mask, it just follows along as well. So I can add a turbulent displays. We just need the main mask. We don't really need these, so I can get rid of these. So let's set the amount to zero and keyframe it over time to be 100. Then over time it will go back to zero. Now we obviously don't want any distortion on her, so let's align this to fade out about here. Smooth out the keyframes and maybe give it some evolution over time as well. So the distortion works well. All right, so this is how you can create this sort of effect. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Hopefully it was easy to follow. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.